Hey guys, welcome to Coding Gram. Today I will show you how to create a stock market predicting program. Now, what I'll be teaching is the basics of machine learning. Don't think that you will take this program and get rich in one night. It doesn't work like that. The actual algorithms are pretty complex, but I'm going to show you the basics that how to implement a machine learning program for this. The data I will be using is the BSE stock market data. Now you can take any company and at the end write BSE. You will get the results. Now go to the BSE site and click on the archives. Now go to the date sections here and go back till 2000 and 2000 and click on first and click on submit. Now at the bottom you can download the CSV file. After downloading, you will see a file like this. The date and a lot of data is given here. So what we require is the close price, number of shares, total trades and total turnover. So let's delete other columns. Now here we also don't require the first row. So let's delete it. Now we need to flip the whole data upside down because the latest data is first and the oldest data is last. So we need to input in our program the old data first and proceed to the newer data. So you can do this by inserting a new column. One, two, three. And using the autofill, fill to the end. Okay. Now select all the five columns. Click on the data tab. Click on sort. Now sort by column A, cell values, largest to smallest. Now our data is flipped. Now we don't require the first row. So delete it. So we have a filtered data here. Save this data. Now copy this file to the Python project. Now our data is visible here. Now make a Python file and let's start coding. We will be using the CSV module so import csv now we need to import the data from the csv file into a python project and make it as an array so so let's give the name data equals list csv reader open name of the file stock.csv comma and open it in R plus mode. Now this will read the data from the CSV file and make it a list that is a two dimensional array and put it in the variable data. Now we need to define a probability factor. Now we have four columns of data. So we will define an array with initial value four and make it till index three. That is total four entries. Also a variable B, which is a array of value one and length four. Now we will define N as a counting number and N as the count variable CN. Now let's use the data till 4,000 entries. So while N is less than 4,000, another loop while CN is less than 10,000. Now what this will do is n is the number of entries. Now we have this number of entries that is 35, 36, 37 etc. So that will be counted by n. Cn what it will do is it will 
take one entry and continuously optimize it till 10,000 times. So each entry will be optimized 10,000 times, then it will move to the next entry, next entry, next entry and so on. We will be calculating the following way. Now B1 stores the value. So B0 equals A0 into data, the row and the first column. Similarly, now what this will do is it will take the data that is the first column of the first row when n is equals to 0. It will multiply it with a factor a0 which is 1. This factor will be changing and it will give the output to b0. Now the b array will store all the data. Now we will calculate the result. So result equals b0 plus b1 plus b2 plus b3. Now we need to optimize the function. We will do this by checking the stock data of the next day and comparing it with a result variable. If it is less than the next data, then it will increase the least variable and if it is more, then it will decrease the most biggest variable. We will do this by using a if function. So if data n plus 1, which is the data of the next day, and column 0 because the column 1 shows the stock data. If the next day data is less than result, then we will find the biggest value. For this, we will first calculate the biggest value in the B array. So, max of the B array. Now we also need to calculate which one is the biggest value that is the index of the b variable. So we will find it by if max1 equals b0 then another variable opt equals 0 that is if the biggest variable was of b index 0 then our opt will be 0 which will represent the index 0. Similarly, we can do this for 1, 2 and 3. Now we know which one was the biggest. Now we'll optimize the function by changing the value of the variable a that is our optimizing factor. So if the biggest variable was of b index 0, then we have to change the factor of a by reducing the factor by another factor. So we will define another variable j which will be the reducing factor. So let's give it 0.001. So a and whatever was the index equals a that index minus the reducing factor j. Similarly, we will do this for the condition if result was less than the value of the next day. So, if result is less than, then we will find the minimum function. Calculate the index. And we will, here, instead of reducing, we will add the factor j. Now, before proceeding, we need to define the increment of n and cn. So here, each and every time the loop starts, cn should be equal to 0. So here, cn equals 0 before the loop starting. And in that, cn equals cn plus 1. And in this loop, we will increment n. So, n equals n plus 1. Now we will print our result in this loop so print our result
now we will also print the accuracy for that we will divide the result by the data of the next day so result upon data n plus 1 and column 0 now before proceeding anywhere else whenever the reader will read the data it will take as a string but we are multiplying and doing a lot of things here as a float value so we need to change the data number as a float so give it a float assignment Now our program is ready to run. So let's run our program. So we received an error. Okay, we used here a single equal to sign. We have to use the comparative sign. So we fix that too. So let's run our program. Okay, so we received an error. Okay, so we have not typed your P. So let's play our program. Okay, here also. So let's start our program. And as you can see here, it started to run. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, then give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Tell me in the comments that whether you like this video or not. And will you like to see a more complex version of this which would be able to execute more high level programming stuff and predict real value data. I will be releasing a new game made in python that is the tic tac toe game. It is very simple and it is fun to make. So we wait for that. Thank you.